Hey everybody, welcome back to The Pressing Matters. I'm Scott, thank you for tuning in and thank you for your support. Today I'm gonna to be talking about one of the most powerful orchestral albums that I've ever heard, The Power of the Orchestra. This is an RCA Living Stereo record and I have several copies uh, over the years to compare, so stay tuned for that. Um, before I get started, if you're new uh, or you haven't already, please consider subscribing. If you could all just hit subscribe, right now hit the like button notify and you'll be sure to get notified of any new content that comes up and you'll be helping out the channel greatly we are surfing towards 5,000. i'd really like to make it uh with the next couple of videos so um, if you can help by subscribing that would be great so um this was one of my earliest classical albums i i love the two pieces that are on it uh, Mussorgsky's Night, of, Night on Bear Mountain and Pictures at an Exhibition, sometimes called Night on Bald Mountain. Um, this particular reading, Rene Leibowitz and the Royal Philharmonic, is legendary. And the original RCA Living Stereo was not in print very long. In fact, only one um, pressing of it exists. If I'm correct it's a 1s 7s pressing and for years they were very hard to come by um, still are in good in, in really good condition I was lucky I don't know how but over the years I found them um, various places and I never paid a lot of money for them um, I had three I had three copies of the original um, I gave one away as a gift to sound Lux audio because they were so nice to me um, and the other two I have here, um, neither one is in perfect shape, but they are in very good playing shape. And with a record like this, most of it is, uh, loud orchestral music. So, um, there's a lot going on that can cover up some minor flaws in the, in the vinyl pressing. But, um... One of the first um, reissue. Let me actually let me show you the two originals first. These are two original pressings. Um, it's impossible to find them with a clean black cover. They all have wear usually. This one's taped up. I think it was sharpied. It's yeah. It's it's hard to find a really good um, jacket. And I'll get to more on that later. Um, but the original pressings, now, if you are a groove reader, like I am, especially with something like this, if you examine the grooves between pressings um, on something that's like a very dynamic record, you can tell when looking at the grooves which one is going to be most dynamic in general. And the original pressings are very dynamic um, when you look at the grooves you can see the light and dark areas and wide spacing of grooves for the loud um, bass parts and it's very evident that it's a it's an excellent excellent high quality high dynamic range mastering and it's legendary for that and you know short of um, Royal ba Ballet Gala and a few other rarities this has been one of the most sought after uh, RCA Living Stereos. So I have two um, and they both look the same as far as the groove reading. Um, when I looked at this pressing, this is the Quintessence. It's an early budget audiophile oriented uh, pressing. It um, this is called, it's from a series called Critics' Choice. It was put out by Pickwick. And they did a series like this of Stereo Spectaculars. And this was one of them. One of the first reissues of this album ever. And they added one track to it, which was Dance Macabre. And when you look at the grooves, they look kind of flat. They don't look um, very dynamic, but it is actually a really good sounding version of this. 
Um, but I have to take it out of the running for, for the best pressing. It's, uh, it's a very good pressing if you can't afford to get one of the other ones, but um, it's, it's on virgin vinyl. It's, it's well done, all analog. Um, just doesn't have quite, quite the dynamic range of the other ones. The next reissue that came was uh, Chesky's Power of the Orchestra. Now this one, you can see the grooves are dynamic and not quite as dynamic as the original, but that's not, a, that's not a hard and fast rule that means that it's not going to sound good. It does sound good. This sounds great. And at the time it came out, um, most people preferred it to the original. I slightly preferred the original at the time. The original has a little bit more C into quality. Um, it's a little fresher sounding and it has all the power that this one does. This one maybe extended the bass a little bit down. Um, so it does sound impressive for sure. Um, it's nicely balanced to mastering very, very good. And I think this replaced the original on the super, uh, TAS super disc list at the time. Um, this one's around, it's, you know, it's available maybe for 60, $70, I think. Um, well worth it uh, if you can find it, but there are other options. The next one was, let's see, this one. This is the 2x45 from Analog Productions. And at the time I got it, um, this is mastered by uh, George Marino. And at the time I got it, I thought it wasn't that impressive, but I've since played it a couple times and I, I do think it's a very, very good um, mastering of this record. It's very dynamic, very impressive. Um, there's just something about it that keeps me from naming it number one um, or closest to the original. The original really is the gold standard and um, measuring up to the original is pretty difficult. But this one did come very close. Um, it sounds great. If you're into 45, there's the usual uh, benefits of 45. Um, but I don't think it's the ultimate one. Personally, Short of the original, the new Analog Productions is my favorite. This is mastered by Ryan K. Smith, and it's wrapped up because <laughs> I usually try to unwrap my records to show them, especially this, it's so reflective. And really I should because they've never, I've never ever seen this dramatic jacket done as well as this. It's a heavy Stoughton um, gloss jacket, and it looks it looks amazing. The reason it's wrapped up is because I've started to um, use the dual pocket sleeves from from Vinyl Storage Solutions, and uh, that kind of seals away the record, and you just have this in the second pocket. Um, this one has pretty much has it all. The only thing it's lacking is maybe that extra fresh feeling of the first pressing. Um, but it's very minor. This, this tape hasn't been played all that much. It hasn't been reissued all that much. And Sterling did the mastering, you know, Ryan K. Smith, he's wonderful. He's done a great job on this, this series. And when I played this one, I overall felt like it had the best attributes of everything. It has the most, low noise floor so when you're hearing the quiet parts which are all over the record it's dynamic but it's dynamic means soft to loud and the soft parts are very clear and very distinct and it, and it draws you in more um, to the proceedings you can see in, into the studio with this one because of that low noise floor the crescendos you know are <laughs> legendary on this record just blow you away legendary and it's all here on this one um very 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 close to the original um in some ways a little cleaner um the string tone is 
about the same as the chess key. Um, the string tone on the original is a little bit better, a little finer, more delicate. Um, the decay is very clear on here. This is the decay of a hall is a very important feature of this record. When you hear those crescendos, you hear the drift off into into space, you hear that long reverberation time and it's very interesting to hear and it's more involving to hear and this one you hear it. The original you hear it. So, you know, um, other other things, the brass, the woodwinds sound great. It's 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 the best of all worlds, I think, and for the price compared to the original, um, it's a really good deal. Forty bucks, um, a gorgeous, gorgeous jacket, wonderful mastering, excellent sound, no deficiencies, quietest vinyl. It's hard to lose with this one. <laughs> And really, these two pieces of music you must have in your collection. I'm going to put this in the main series, but also in the Building a Classical Collection series, because these are great pieces for beginners um, or people that are just starting to uh, like classical music, especially if they're coming from the rock world. Um, there's a lot of fun power and dynamics on these records, and that makes it a very special record. And the original is special too. Uh, if you can find one, grab it. Um, it should be a 1S, 7S pressing. But this one is available now and it's 40 bucks. So I think it's a great, great deal. If you must have 45, you're not losing anything to the 45. You might be gaining a little bit, but it's very, very close. Um, I just prefer hearing this on 33. I prefer the original layout. And I think this is a much finer balance on this on this particular um, reissue. So that's all I have to say on Power of the Orchestra. Let me know what you think. Um, do you have the original? Do you have any of these re reissues? What do you think? Uh, let me know in the comments below. Until next time, I'm Scott for The Pressing Matters. Have a great day.